Welcome back to another Rosh Review, guys. Today on the show, no introduction is needed. The legendary Godzilla is here, and this is gonna be fun. The R32 GTR was launched back in 1989 as the all new successor to the fairly average R31, which unfortunately was never given a GTR version. The new car received a new engine called the RB26 DETT. It was twin turbocharged and had been given a larger stroke than the RB25 of previous. The Nissan team also gave it a new body style, new chassis, and a new drivetrain. The all new R32 GTR was by far the best new GTR that had ever been made since. It was built and designed specifically to dominate the Japanese touring car Group A division, and would do so. In 1989, Nissan entered its R32 GTR race car into that exact event, and out of all 29 races, the R32 won every single one. It won the 1990 and 1994 JTCC championships. It even went to the 1990 24-hour Nuremberg race and won there too. But that wasn't all from the new GTR on the block. Far from it. We haven't even talked about Australia yet. Gibson Motorsports was a private racing team that specialized in Group A and C Nissans. In 1990, Gibson was able to get a Nismo-tuned R32 GTR race car, and they went to work on it, removing any and all unnecessary parts. Now, due to FIA rules, Nissan had to make 500 road cars of their Nismo-tuned model. So as Gibson was rebuilding their R32 race cars, they had racked up a massive bill with Nissan of over $1 million. This was far too expensive so Gibson decided to build their own parts. So much so that by the end of it, only the body, front and rear cross members, and the engine block were original Nissan parts. Everything else was made by Gibson. In 1990, 91, and 92, the Gibson's R32 race cars won the ATCC Group A Championships, solidifying the car's dominance and earning the nickname that caught on quick Godzilla. But unfortunately, in 1993, the ATCC changed their rules heavily to favor the local V8s. That's right, everyone. Today we're standing next to an R32 Nissan GTR, my personal favorite Skyline generation. And this thing just looks so good. With its small, boxy design, I absolutely love it. And this thing just looks so 90s. It's got such a clean front end. The rear end tail lights, just so iconic, so nice back there. Up the front as well, this is where the legend lives. This has an RB26 twin turbo DETT, and this thing is a legend. Now from factory, this thing would have made around 276 horsepower, but of course that was the Japanese gentlemanship agreed number. What this car would have actually made was somewhere around 316 horsepower. Now this one of course is not stock, so I'll just quickly go over some of the mods that have been done and I'll leave a full mods list in the description below. So just roughly guys, this thing has upgraded Garrett turbos, still running a twin turbo setup. The injectors have been done, the engine's been cammed, We've got a strut brace in here, and this is all being tuned, now making 480 rear wheel horsepower. Now just coming down to the wheels here on the R32 guys, these of course are not factory. I'll show you a picture right now of what this car would have had. So these, of course, are a Volk racing wheel. They're an 18-inch wheel, 10 and a half wide, and I think they really suit the car. Now, just coming to the rear of the R32 GTR now, guys. Really love this wing up here. It's not crazy aggressive or anything, but it just really does suit the car. 
Iconic brake lights here, guys. You've got your four circular brake lights, some of the most iconic in the entire car industry still to this day. GTR badge, of course, is right there. And this also has a three inch custom exhaust, guys. So take a listen. Now just inside the R32 GTR, guys, really basic interior in here, but that's something I really do admire about it. It's really a no frills sports car that's driver focused and I really do like it. Uh, even on the wheel here, guys, it's a really basic wheel. It's got a good grip though, feels really nice in your hands, but you know, there's no buttons. There's no, not even an airbag in this wheel, guys. Uh, it's just got a little GTR encrusted horn in the middle and that's all you get. Now, inside the gauge cluster as well, just really nice 90s basic gauges. Red line's at around 8,000, guys, so that's really nice to see as well. You've also got a front torque gauge in the gauge cluster because, of course, this is all-wheel drive, but it is rear-wheel drive biased. Now, in the center console, you've got a boost gauge, you've got your oil temperature gauge, and you do have a battery voltage meter as well. Basic climate controls, and it's pretty basic, like I've said. You've got a five-speed manual gearbox in here, really nice to see, shifts really well. Traditional handbrake, love to see that always. Seats in the GTR, really nice. They're really basic again, uh, just sort of this basic material. Really quite comfortable though, and uh, they are fairly supportive, surprisingly enough. Uh, now there are two back seats in this car, very tight. Um, in an emergency, yeah, you could get some people back there if you needed to, uh, but like most cars in this sort of segment, uh, they're really only for emergencies. Um, now let's get this thing out on the road and see how this thing drives. All right, so just straight away driving this car, guys. The experience is already immense. Like you can you can hear the road noise, you can feel the car, the engine's loud, and um, <laughs> it's just a really really cool experience. Um, seating position is excellent. Um, you know, all the GTR Skylines, they just knew what they were doing. Uh, such a good seating position. The seats are really comfortable as well. They do support you. And just so easy, everything is just in your perfect reach. Uh, and your field of vision as well is uh, really good from the front. The good thing about having this twin turbo setup, guys, is that you really do feel like you have quite a bit of power everywhere. It's, it's not like in a lot of cars that I review where, you know, it's really gutless until you get to about four and a half grand. This car, it feels fairly, fairly stable just about everywhere, Fair, you know, fairly responsive. Braking, these are still the factory brakes, guys, so you do gotta be a little bit careful. <laughs> this thing does go very quick, and uh, you soon don't realize how fast you're going once you get into the turbo. Um, but you know, it, it, you just gotta be aware when you drive it, obviously.
does remind me sort of of an Evo of how, how much this thing just sticks to the road. But wow, the, the turning in on this car, the steering just does feel really sharp. It's really hard to believe that these cars are, you know, 30 years old almost because <laughs> they just drive so well. And when you drive a car like this, you just really do feel like you're you're one with the car. It, it's very connective driving. And um, <laughs> wow. It's just on a windy road like this. It's um, it's really where this car is at home, and uh, with such a strong racing background, you can really feel it in the drive right now. But wow, guys, this thing is just—it's a legend, and you know, driving this bit of history here, it just—I can't stop smiling because. This is definitely a dream car of mine, guys. And to get it out on these windy roads today, it's just been such an honor. Um, this car, it really is amazing. It really does live up to the hype. And, you know, yes, it may be, you know, a bit rough around the edges, but man, that is what makes the character of this car. And what this thing can do is mind-boggling it really is and it's, when you factor in the age of it it is just really unbelievable all right guys I'm gonna finish the video off here today huge thanks to Wes for bringing out his R32 GTR on the show today this thing was an absolute ride to drive a total honor to have it on the show today and uh, it lives up to the legend for sure now this car is actually for sale guys so I'll leave a link for it in the description below so please check it out guys, if you want to own a bit of history, this thing is worth it. So, another massive shout out guys, it goes out to Royal Car Scenes here in WA. Um, they do a lot of great stuff for the car community, nothing but good things to say about those guys. So I'll leave a link for them in the description below, check them out. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video guys, please hit that like button, consider subscribing if you're new here, see you on the next video.